Bangladesh Show, episode number 203. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. I am flying solo again. Uh, this is going to be interesting. But I am not here solo, as for I have a guest. And our guest is Sotera1324. The Pokemon King has arrived. Also, may I just add that happy 20th anniversary, Pokemon. Yay! What are the odds that you happen to interview a Pokemon on the day of the anniversary? I think you're the first uh, pony slash Pokemon we have on the show. I think you're the only one in that too. Sweet. But how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. I was sick before, but I'm starting to feel better. Yay, that's good, that's good. Good to know that you're getting better. So I think before we officially start, I need to ask you the four important questions. And those questions are, who's your favorite character? My favorite character. Let's see. I have a lot of favorite characters. Well, Zakora is one because one she's so wise and just her rhyming. It's just so awesome. <laughs> and um, I guess Applejack since she's so she's like loyal, but she's also honest. She's like both Rainbow Dash and herself. True. She's honest, brutally honest at points. Yeah. And uh, I guess my favorite Equestria Girls character would be Sunset Shimmer. She's my waifu. Don't touch her. Oh, uh, we're gonna have problems then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anywho, so, favorite episode? Favorite episode? I have to say my favorite episode would be in Season 5, Amending Fences, because that's so relatable in real life, and I've been in that kind of situation before. Ah, okay. Are you on the Twilight side, or are you on the... Um, Moon Dancer side. Ah. But kind of in Twilights, too. Well, those kind of situations are relatable. It is. So, how did you become a fan of the show? Well, I know that a bunch of other YouTubers, they would add, like, clips from MLP and stuff. I'd be like, oh, you know, that's not, that's not really that important. But then I started seeing Nightmare Moon, and I'm like, oh, this character is pretty interesting. And then one time on this Canadian TV show for kids called Treehouse, they were showing it. And it was um Mysterious Mare Do Well, and I saw it, and I'm like, okay, you know, this is kind of interesting. And then I went on YouTube, and I saw more of Nightmare Moon. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to see one episode and see how it is. And I just happened to watch the Canterlot wedding. Yeah, I skipped all the way there. And I saw it. I'm like, wow, this is pretty interesting. And I got hooked up into it. <laughs> it only takes one. Aye. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just one episode. And it just it depends on which episode you first see, too. Yeah, I mean, but you mentioned you first saw Mysterious Mary. What was it? Yes, that was the first episode I saw. Wow. A lot of people do not like that episode. Uh, I I didn't like it as much either. That's why when I saw it, I wasn't really hooked into it. I'm just puzzled by you wanting to see more because, like, it's just married well. And... Well, so I didn't want to see more because of the show. Like, yeah, you know, you know, he, Rainbow Dash is trying to figure out who it is. That that, But I saw, like, you know, Rainbow Dash and stuff, and I'm like... Oh, okay. You know, this is getting interesting. And also, may I just add that before when I got into the show, I thought Rainbow Dash was a guy. <laughs> I don't know, just the raspy voice. I always thought it was a guy. I thought it was a guy pony. I didn't know it was all girls. <laughs> uh, that's got to be interesting. <laughs> but I, I think you're not the first one. There, there were a few people who confused her for a girl. Sorry, a boy. Oh, yeah. Even before, when I actually got really hooked into it, I was bored one day. So I literally typed on Google saying, is Rainbow Dash a guy or a girl? <laughs> Uh, were there any similar questions? No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, at least we all now know that Rainbow Dash is a girl. Yay. Yes. Unless if there was a gender swap version. Oh, that's called Rainbow Blitz. Yes. Uh, they need to make that real. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that would be interesting if they do. That'd be awesome. And the final question is, um, what do your family and friends do? think about your love for said show i don't think my family knows that i like it <laughs> well i know i know my brother does and he just he just agrees with it. you know he everyone has their own choices and um, for my friends they some know about it, some don't sometimes they'll be like hey do you know what a brony is they'll be like no what's a brony like, it's a person who likes mlp and i'm like are you a brony <laughs> they'll be like no they're not a brony and i'm like oh okay just keep my mouth shut <laughs> But if um, one of my friends says that they are a brony, then I go on up with it. I'd be like, hey, I'm a brony too. <laughs> oh, it's a trap. I'm not a brony. I just wanted to trick you. Oh, uh, yeah. I never did really think about that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, wow. But that reminds me of that one show, uh, Will Ferrell and who's that guy? Uh, Mark 
Wahlberg movie. Oh, isn't it like Stepdads or something? The other one, the first one, the first team up they did. Um, the the other guys. Oh yeah. Yeah, because um, I, if I remember, like Mark Wahlberg, he kind of wanted to, you know, tease the belly dancer or something like that, and he did a perfect parallel or something like that. I don't know what they really move, and everybody was shocked. And his partner, um, Will Ferrell, said, "You know ballet? I know a bit, so I can tease them." Like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's like okay, <laughs> that's dedication to your craft. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thanks for answering the four questions. And before oh, yeah, we... was awesome. Thank you. Uh, before we carry on, I got my co-host here, and I'm going to add him in. And joining us now is Ro. Hey, Ro. Hello, cool people. How are you doing? Well, it's been a rough start of the year. I that's not good. Well, that's all I can say. By the way, Ro, meet our guest, Totera. Yes. Totera, meet Ro. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely moving forward. Torterra, um, I, I'm guessing people have seen your name before and the people who've seen it know what you do. But mind introducing yourself to the general audience on what you do for the fandom? Well, before I just used to do voiceovers like gender swap versions uh, for the MLP. And then I saw some other reviewers reviewing episodes, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to give it a try, give my own opinion on things. So I decided to review MLP episodes now. <laughs> okay, so how did that happen, like from uh, VA to reviewing? I'm like a really energetic person. Like I love letting my energy out. And then I saw like Silver Quill, you know, he he's like so energetic too. And I... And then when he did his collab with Film Sparks, I believe, that's when I noticed that there were more reviewers out there. And I'm like, okay, I'll jump on the bandwagon and, and get some more people. Hmm, okay. So you're one of the few people who discovered the reviewer side of the fandom through Civil Quill. Yes. Ah, all right. Because if you were around back in the days, uh, that credit would go to uh, Digibro or Tommy Oliver. Those two. I remember that I, I saw, um, I think it was with Tommy Oliver, they did a review on the Candlelot Wedding with Anthony C. Yeah, that, that was, they, those people were a while back now. Like, I don't think they do that anymore. They're mostly on anime reviews now. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, but they, well, they wanted to change, so can't blame them. So, mostly you do reviews. So, how do you tackle the review? Well, at first, like, I just wanted to, I, I at first, I just wanted to rush it. Like, I wanted to get it done before the next episode. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of gave, like, my first opinions on it and this and that. But then the more reviews I've done with more episodes, I start getting into more detail. And then I started holding back because I get so much into detail. Oh, all right. So basically, you're falling into the silver quill trap. Yes. Uh, silver quill does good reviews, but he takes his time. Oh yeah, patience is key. True. And a lot of um, flight animations. <laughs> yes. Which is kind of hard for me because I use Pony Generator because I don't have enough money to pay for artists. Yeah, the money is always an issue. But still, uh, you got your point across and you got a few uh, views there, here and there. So that's good. Much better than our videos. Well, most of the, well, not the only red and but I am a red and black OC. <laughs> How do you create your OC? Like, what was the idea behind it? Well, I know before when I became Torterra, my old account was Bulbasaur1234. But then, silly me, I forgot my password. And I was young back at the time. So then after I got around to the uh, fourth generation, and I liked Torterra. And then I just put in my three favorite colors, red, black, and purple. And boom, there you go. There's me. <laughs> so the Torterra... Uh, palette swap and your OC eh, seems okay seems logical yeah well usually people say go for what you like and black red and purple seems to be a good color mix but when you look at the spectrum of pony OCs those are the colors that you do not want <laughs> <laughs> but I am very unique true technically you are unique and you have your own YouTube channel I don't see any exactly. other black, red, purple ponies have their own YouTube channel. <laughs> no, you do not. So you're one of a kind. Yay! I see here that you also do song covers? 
Yes, I do a lot of song song covers. So how do you do those and what do you record them with and you know, basically how do you do it? Well, sometimes I just look for like karaoke versions or instrumental versions of the song on YouTube. But if I can't find like an instrumental or anything, I just grab the original song and I remove the vocal. So I just keep the the music in. And what do you use, like Audacity or? Yeah, I do. I use Audacity. Ah, uh, I think I get the idea how you did it then, because I think I do the same thing. <laughs> All right. So, you do have a few other things besides ponies. Like pony is kind of your main, but I do see that you also do, um, well, besides the song cover, you do. Uh, impressions, voice dubs. I think those are the two means I see. Well, I also do like um, uh, animated music videos or, or whatnot. Like I do, I put music in. I add like movies and stuff in from other clips. Ah, uh, AMVs. I remember those. Those were popular yep. back in the days. Oh yeah. So how do you edit your videos? Like, what do you use? Well, at first, and I kind of still do, I I always used Windows Movie Maker, but then um, a Tune Critic, he was the one who recommended Sony Vegas to me. Sony Vegas is okay, but for me, I can't really do that because it's got to cost a lot. And Windows Movie Maker works well for me. Yay! <laughs> well, you know what they say about Sony Vegas. In a race between Windows Movie Maker and Sony Vegas, who would win? Windows Movie Maker. Why? Sony Vegas doesn't run. <laughs> Uh-huh. Zing! Uh, wow. Wow, bro. No, 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 no comment. I I'll be no here all night, folks. It's good to be back. Yay. So, Totero, when did you start with the Brony reviews? Pretty much when Season 6 came around. Because Wait, back you in mean Season... Season 4 or 5? I meant to say Season 5. Oh, okay, because Season 6? What time-traveling madness have yeah, you had? Well, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself there. When Season 5 came out, because back when I said before about Season 4, when I saw Silverquill doing his reviews, I didn't want to do reviews back then because I thought, you know what, people might think that I probably have the same opinion or they think I'm copying someone. But then when Season 5 came around and I saw other reviewers, I thought, you know what, yeah, I'll give my own opinion out because everyone has their own different opinions about episodes. True, and if you do review um, Season 4 again, I don't think people are going to assume that you're copying other people in their opinions. Yeah. So besides the YouTube, you do also have a uh, divin art, right? Yes, I do. I'm a terrible artist, though. So I just grab like vectors or like uh, pictures with no backgrounds in it, and I just put them all together. But still, you're doing your best, and it's kind of your own thing. You don't pay artists to do cover for you. Well, I do have one artist though. Like she, she drew some Torterra poses for me, which I do thank her for that. And she doesn't make me pay her, so she's a good friend. Oh yay! A big fan. Oh yeah. Mm, awesome. You want to give her a shout out or keep her a secret to yourself? No, I'll give her a shout out. You could check out Silver Star Strike on DeviantArt. She's a good person. I'll be sure to put a link in so people can click on it. All right. <laughs> Like you mentioned earlier on, like, today is today, right? It's the 20th anniversary for Pokemon? Yes, February 27th was when they released Pokemon Red and Green in Japan. That was the day where children know the horror of Japanese RPGs. Yeah, animal abuse. You trap them inside a small ball and you make them fight each other. Oh, yes. But they seem to like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't seem to mind fighting each other. Oh, yeah. The, especially the trap inside a small ball. Oh, th- those are my worst nightmares. I hate being trapped inside a small ball. Uh, I... I always picture that they would go for a brainwash process inside that ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't give me more fears. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, have you noticed those little window screens inside the Pokeball? I imagine, you know, that ep- like that episode from The Simpsons where that dog got brainwashed into being a freaking bloodhound? I would imagine the same thing happened in Pokeball, just random images of, like, fight scenes and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. You know, that just strapped in that, <laughs> strapped in the chair, just oh, flickering. Wow. Pokemon abuse, right right man. Uh, no wonder we have that uh, black and white game. Uh, it's all about freeing the Pokemons. Funny thing is, the bad guy is using See, Pokemons. Hot twist, that, that guy was actually the good guy. He was actually, he know what was what was up, but he had evidence, but he decided to, like, take matters in his own hand. Well, not really, Ro, because the bad guy uses Pokemons. Well, he's got to use something. 
that's actually what confused me. They, t- they, the whole team, I think it was Team Plasma, they were talking about like, oh, you know, we want to bring peace to the world. The Pokemon must be free. And yet, when you face them, they're using Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So, like, how are they going to set them free if they're using po- Pokemon for their own purpose? Well, you know what they say, you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet. Black and white is just confusing all around. Pretty sure the next Pokemon's gonna be better. What was it, like, butter and uh, <laughs> cinnamon or something coming in? I don't even know anymore. I lost track completely. Well, they're already running out of colors and, and uh, gemstones. And rare materials. Yeah, sand letters. Mm. What was it, uh, gold and silver? Those were rare materials. You know, they could have um, gold, silver, platinum. They, there was no platinum, right? No, it was diamond, pearl, and platinum. I thought it was emerald. No, no, I think it was um, it was silver, gold, and crystal. Yeah. How? That's not even a material. Oh. I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, the new Pokemon, it's um, Pokemon Celestia and Pokemon Luna. Yay! You mean Pokemon Sun and Moon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I like my version better. But still, yay, it's out when? End of the year? Yeah, it's coming out on the holidays. Holidays of 2016, you pick a holiday, it's probably going to be there. And it's coming out in nine different languages. So yay! And I can't wait to play it because from what I heard, it's set in, well, the base idea for the game, according to Shigeru Miyamoto's Twitter account, says in Malaysia, where this show is based in. I don't know, it's it's still kind of a mystery. Is that Twitter account official or not? Because... I'm not sure. I don't know. Because it says real Shigeru and... I, Is it a verified account? No, that's the part. Like, there's no other Shigeru Miyamoto account. Like, if you go to the Googles and type in Shigeru Miyamoto Twitter, like, that's the only one there. Maybe, does he have his own website where he has, like, links to his medias? I like all professionals do? No, no, don't think so. He has. Like, I've been trying to look for it, but none. It means it could be fake. There's a good chance it could be fake. Because professionals always link their medias or whatever where they else can be reached or, like, be followed, like Facebooks and Twitters. That's what a lot of pros do. That's how you know it's a real account or not. Yeah, but Shigeru himself, I, I don't know if he go, he's going to do that or not, but oh, is he just going to ignore that all the social medias and stuff? But from what I saw his Twitter posts, they were kind of, uh, this is real or not? Like, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen those one as well. Like, Pokemon Cena, then Pokemon John. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, Probably you really went big. there. Yes. I mean, seriously, there's becoming Pokemon just becoming so ridiculous. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, Pokemon's just fun, but when they don't have any more ideas for titles, it's just getting sad. Even some of the Pokemon designs are kind of ridiculous. I mean, they, there's one that's just Gears. Gears is... Gears, I don't mind, but the one that's just ridiculous is Trash. Oh yeah, the, the trash bag. Yeah, like what? what? Or that chandelier one. Chandelier's not that bad, but still, like what? That's I a mean, Pokemon. That's furniture. I know. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could like they could do like more Pokemon animals. I mean, you don't see any dolphin type Pokemon's or any moose type Pokemon. I thought there was a reindeer kind. And I thought there yeah, was there's, a moose. There's like reindeer, but no, there's no moose. I thought there was. No, probably. Not hundred percent sure. But still, you could do a lot more. Like, you could do... Is there an alligator or crocodile type? Yeah, yeah there the, is. from the third generation, I think. Oh, yeah, that kind. I mean, like, really, really no, on all it? fours. Like, a real crocodile. Not the hybrid one like we have in Gen 2. Yeah, there's one. It's um, it's uh, called a sand dial. It's a, it's a desert crocodile. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we can state ideas and they probably have done it. Uh, but Pokemon, still... How did we get on to Pokemon? Because my presence is making you talk about Pokemon. Oh, uh, yeah. And also, uh, 20th anniversary. It's not often we get that. That's cool. Yeah, what timing? Through that. But you know what? Just to get things on track, you guys know about the whole um putting decals on your car or making awesome art on your car? Nope. No? You haven't seen nope. it? Like putting huge stickers on your car, like um, anime stickers and whatnot. Never seen it before? You know I hate cars. I don't <laughs> know. This is the first. Why you hate cars, Ro? I worked in a gas station. And then I was in the factory where we made parts for cars. Okay, but 
hate cars good? I hate cars. Give me a monster truck. It's the only thing I'll approve so I can smash other cars. And then I'll smash the monster truck as well. Well, what about the Disney movie cars? Do you hate that? <laughs> I've not seen them. I have no opinion. <laughs> uh, I think after you watched it, you got to have an opinion. That's why I don't watch because I don't want to have an opinion. <laughs> I hate cars. That's it. <laughs> Uh, well, talking about cars and smashing things up with them, that's a terrible segue. There's a franchise magic team hammer limousine in Madrid, and it's in conjunction with Madrid Fashion Week. And if you guys click on the link, we get to see a pimp out hammer limo with uh, pony stickers on them, like official pony art. And that is just awesome. Oh yeah, get get all the famous uh, actors, uh, actresses, or get a bunch of the brony analysts and just go right to a brony con. <laughs> yep, that, that would be awesome. Hummer, typical Hummer. Jumping on the bandwagon as well. Do you know how much gasoline this mother Humber e- freaking eats per mile? It's insane. Yeah, but this one is for um, limousine service, so it's not going to eat that much. Limo or not, it's still a Hummer. It is just so much piles of nope. It's a Hummer, but it's extended. Yep, true. But I thought you hated cars, bro. I do hate cars, and I gotta know my enemy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. But anyway, um, this is for Madrid Fashion Week, and the artist or the fashion designer for the whole pony line of fashion is called Maria Escote. I think that's how you said. And apparently she is the one responsible for quote unquote the Hummer and also the fashions for ponies in Madrid. If you click on the second link, you get to see what I'm talking about because somehow she integrated ponies into fashions. And I think Larson got a cut out of it because if you take a look at the pictures, there's a lot of wings, wings everywhere. So she's pretty much she's pretty much rarity, but in real life, uh, not that rarity. Like if you go take a look at the pictures, it's Twilight's wing. How dare she clip off her wings? Oh no, I think she just talked to Larson about it. <laughs> yeah, so basically it's like, oh, uh, Larson, I need wings. Okay, here you go, wings. Yeah, I mean, she's like, pretty much Twilight, like there's nothing. Uh, but still, uh, I do like some of the fashions because I'm looking through some of her galleries and she does have a, well, a pretty good lineup for fashions. Some are ridiculous, some are good. Like the, the Pinkie Pie pony shirt with her name on it and the Celestia sundress. That's there too. I mean, there's a lot of awesome things if you take a look-see. And some of them are viable, like you really want them, you really want to wear them. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> We're guys talking about fashion, that's not us. <laughs> yeah, we, we men I mean, don't, do not talk about fashion. True that. I mean, I know I'm an artist, creationism, uh, I'm sorry, creating things is my shtick and all, but when it comes to fashion, something just does not click. Oh, what do you mean? When I look at some clothes. I mean, do you ever see people wear the stuff in public? Uh, that's true. That's true. I, okay, the things I see in art shows sometimes, I don't know, I just click on a channel. Well, in the past, when I had TV, I clicked on freaking channels like Fashion for Accident. And then I see these clothes like, what is she wearing? And why do I never see this on the streets? Mm, true that. But sometimes when I take a look, see at some of the clothes, like um, the Celestia sundress, that's pretty cool. I don't mind... Well, not me personally, but someone wearing it. That'll be cool. Um, Torterra, is there anything I'm missing here? Because besides the singing, the dubbing, the reviewing, is there anything else that you're doing? Uh, so far, no. So far, I'm I'm just doing fan dubs and reviews and video works. And talking about fan dubs, didn't you mention to me earlier that you had a part in... What's that animation called again? I'm forgetting. Um, Daughter of Discord? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I auditioned for a bunch of male characters, but I only got a, a small role as a, a changeling. Yeah, people need to start out small. And that's your big role. That's your big debut. Changeling exactly. number one. <laughs> Soon you'll be remembered as the changeling number one and other greatest hits. Oh yeah, I'll be like, hey, that one changeling is really good. <laughs> yeah. 
But as for now, it's not out yet, right? No, it's not out yet. But we can clearly assume that it's good, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be fun. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just saying. But it's a changeling and you voice it. Yeah, well, they got they sent me the script, so yeah, that's all you get. Wait, you, they send you the whole script or your lines only? No, the whole script. Oh, wow. I know how the whole episode 3 is going to be. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's how it usually does. Mm-hmm. Ro, anything? What are your plans for future? Any, like, projects besides voice acting and overs and singing? Not really, but I do need to collab with my senpai one day. Ah. Don't we all? Don't we all? The obligatory collabs. Those are fun. <laughs> you know it, brother. Technically, I've never done a collab before, so i got no idea. But what about you, Ro? Have you done a collab? Yes, several of them. Ah. And still a few more coming up. But then again, they're no longer my senpais. We're now best buds, you know, rubbing <laughs> shoulder, rubbing, uh, what's, it, what, what's the saying? Um, rubbing elbows, yeah. high-fying, going bowling on Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, those, those are those, those what they people say. Mm-hmm. So, Tara, who would you like to collab with besides the senpais? Oh, a lot of people. I mean, I, I got A&Y to make some cameo appearances in my reviews. Aha, uh-huh. so, mm, true. So have you two not done anything, like collabs or stuff like that? I have some collabs. Like, I have one uh, friend named Traveling Arrow. He's going to collab with me and do Prince's Dream of Magic Sheep. So, as for now, that's going to be the first collab on your channel? Well, actually, no. My first collab was um with another friend of mine. She's also she's a voice actress. Um, We made, like, a little predictions thing or whatever for the Friendship Games before it came out. Ah, uh, okay. Let me see. Uh, Ecosher Girls Friendship Games trailer? Is that the video you're talking about? Uh, I think so. Six. Yes, because we were looking over the trailer, yes. Yeah, okay, six months ago, that one. So this was kind of your first collab then? Yes. So everything scripted and stuff? Yeah, we we wrote the whole script. We gave our own opinions on things and our predictions on what we thought we would see in the friendship games. Well, I consider it a collab. The usual way things are done on my show is I call people in, hey, you want to do something? Ah, uh, sure. And where's the script? What script? So basically, this show shoots from the hip and we don't script things. And you get a funny reaction from most of them. Like those well-speaking people, uh, they do a lot of ums, ahs, and uh. <laughs> Which Sweetie Bot has to cut them all out. Exactly. Uh, but still, it's fun. And I, the jokes that they make, I... They will never be on air. Never. But anywho, thank you, Tara, for coming on and answering my silly questions. Oh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. It was it was my very first podcast, actually. Oh, really, no? Yep. We're glad to be your first, and I hope you had fun, because, well, if you didn't, I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> no, you didn't do a terrible job. I. It feels like I am. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Uh, actually, though, I do would like some chocolate milk. I... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, not going to, not going to. I, I'm not the peasant that Sapphire says I am. No. Oh, sure. So you get the girl pony of chocolate milk. You I don't get didn't... a guy, a Pokemon. I didn't give her any. Yes, you did. Don't lie to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, anywho, before we end the show, I need to go to the, my favorite part of the show, which is the emails times. It's not often that we get emails, but when we do, it's really awesome. And uh, if you want to send us emails, you can send it at the mbsshow.gmail.com. See what we'll read them through, and I will personally read them on the show. And first letter comes from CRC Brony, and his question from the past email goes, Will Rolicious shave his beard? I would you ask me such questions? I don't know. That's his question. I'm just reading it out. Why? I don't know. What language is this? I don't know, but so will you? No! But I thought you did. No, I didn't. Once, because you asked your... I just trimmed it because it was starting to... Because my freaking breakfast was starting to, like, get caught in my beard. <laughs> just like my mustache got stuck in the freaking tea. Uh, I had to trim it just a little bit. Okay. I know how that feels. <laughs> I was having pancakes one time and the maple syrup got caught in my beard. 
See, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, I can agree with you there with the beards. Trim, yes, shave. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not ever, ever approach me with such requests or questions, dear sir. Cannot simply get rid of the manlyhood of your face. True, but I do. I, I, I think I look good with no hair on face, except eyebrows. But anyway, um, his new email goes... Norman, would you like me to read those? Yeah, sure, go ahead, man. Okay, dear Norman Sanzo and all the other crazy people on the other side, I get... I guess thanks again for this delivering my emails on the show. It's really fun to listen to your answers on the show. But I think I'd better send you a more up-to-date questions, though. Listen to the newest episode kind of pointed that out. Anyway, what is the exact count of Kyle's game collection? Oh, if only we knew. He did show it on webcam, and oh my goodness gracious. It's like a huge library filled with digital entertainment. It's insane. All the consoles, he owns them all, man. He is a madman. Mm-hmm. So for Totera here, um, Kyle is one of our other co-hosts who couldn't be here right now because he's attending Heartwarming Con in the Netherlands. And he oh, is nice. a major game collector. He collects the NES games, SNES, um, N64, even the Sega Saturn, and so on. So he has a wow. huge collection of games. And we got no idea how many games he has. And I think he doesn't know himself too. Like, if he were to count, maybe. But I don't think he has the time. He has all of them. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. And does he have a life? What is a life? Is that a pizza topping? I have no idea. Actually, life is a cereal. Ah, yes. Really? Yeah. Well, that explains it. From Kellogg's, right? I do believe so. Yeah. And let's see. Will Rowe slash James come back on soon? I'm back. I was just uh, out in the hospital doing the stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm back. I'm good. I'm, everything's fine. Everything's peachy key, fine and dandy. No need to panic. All is good. <laughs> Move along. Are you sure? Um, you sound like you're panicking. No, I'm not. But anyway, as for James, um, he's with Kyle attending Heartwarming Con. So they're meeting up for the first time, I think, or the second, because they met at Bruni Scott. So they're having fun and we're not. Boo. I actually never been to a Pony Con. Really? Yeah, I've never, I've always wanted to go to one, but I've never had the chance to. Have you ever been to a con? Oh yeah, I've been, I've been to uh, cons around here in Canada. Ah. So you're based in Canada. So have you not tried going to Brony Can? I I try to, but there's the matter of money. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, next question. Do you think we will see Flush Eye's brother? Mm. Yes, I think so, but I don't know. Probably. We'll yeah, I didn't know Flush Eye had a brother. Mm, take... Plot twist. <laughs> this is a very funny story. Um, Back in Season 5, before the other half of the season started... Episode titles were coming out on four chains of all places. And one of the titles was Brotherhood Social. The synopsis mentioned something about Fluttershy and her brother, which was kind of you know, spoilery at the time. And people were speculating and giving theories and just saying stuff about, oh, this is going to be awesome because uh, we finally get to see Fluttershy's brother, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, it's just Big Mac and Elbow Bloom. And someone uh, tweeted um, Jason Thiessen, the director for season 5 at the time, about will we see Fletcher Shai's brother? And he mentioned maybe in the future, hashtag season 6. So who knows? It's one of those situations where there's interest, the writers know it, just needs Hasbro to greenlight the idea. If Fluttershy gets a brother, name him Butterscotch. No, I don't want that <laughs> because that would be just a big no-no in the writing fandom. Like, yeah, and can you imagine all the Undertale crossovers? Dude, no. I know that in the in the episode, the one where Pinky knows, though, there was the old pony Fluttershy. I don't remember. I need to really double-check that one. Oh, yeah. Even in Rarity Takes Manhattan... If you look closely in the background when the old pony's crossing and she says, I'm walking here, you see Babs walking with uh, Aunt Orange in the background. Wait, what? Babs? Yeah. Oh, Rarity Takes Manhattan, season 5, right? Yes. Okay, I need to double check that one because I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's in, Babs is in the background with Aunt Orange. Nobody on the review cast noticed that. Damn. Yay, I'm the first to notice. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, did you mention that on your review yet? 
No, I haven't, but I do have it in the script. Yay, okay, go for it. Like, wow. <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing it. Ah, okay. There's a refresher. Okay, now I need to double check. All right, thanks. <laughs> something to look forward There's to. something new every day. Yep, yep. Uh, so, Ro, next question. By the way, you miss out on what is something that you would like to see in Season 6. Oh, yeah, what would I like to see in Season 6? Uh, explosions! Hmm, we can manage that. Now, hold on. This, we're not going to turn this into a Michael Bay show. Uh, probably not. But besides the whole Fluttershy brother thing, I, I would like to see more family members besides the one that we already know and have. Yeah, we don't see a lot much of the parents or the family members for that matter. Yeah, I mean, we do know the pies. Like, we, I think we got all of them. Like, Maud and Limestone and who else? Like, uh... Uh, it was marble. Marble, yeah. We we seen them, and then we see the two parents. So that's good. Um, now I would like to see more of well, quote unquote, Applejack's parents. Well, no, because she did. Uh, Applejack does say to Apple Bloom, "If mom and dad were here, they'd be so proud." So either they've moved out somewhere, or they're possibly, you know, I will not say it. Let's just say Applejack is Batman. Oh yeah, or we could just see her parents are fainted like Pokemon's. That's true. But you're playing Nuzlocke, so you need to set them free. Uh, so, there's that. Uh, I don't know, who else? Like, Twilight's parents, probably? Like, you know what? I want to see well, more. We've seen, we've seen her parents, but they don't They don't speak. They're yeah. just, like, in there in the crowd. I-, I want them to speak. And what better chance than the start of Season 6? Because if you've seen stuff, um, something happened, and it's probably a best time for parents to come and speak. Right? Yeah. They're like, Twilight, we are disappointed. Well, even Rainbow Dash too. When Rainbow Dash was talking about the Equestria games, we see that one pony who has a rainbow mane too. Hmm. Uh, isn't that like in season one when she was riding on her dad slash brother? I don't know if it's a brother, if it's her dad, but yeah, it's when um Harsh when he was announcing the Equestria games where they're gonna be held, and she got upset. Yeah. Anyway, Ro, next question. How you think Emily Blunt will do in the movie coming out November 2017, and what you think might happen? Uh, I'm thinking what might happen. Explosions! Yeah, probably it's a movie. And I think Emily will do great. She'll do fine. She'll be good. She'll be awesome. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be good. She's going to be okay. Not terrible. Like, she'll do her job. But other than that, it's too soon to say. If you've seen Emily Blunt's... Um, performance, I think you get a general idea. As for me, I haven't, so I'm just going to go say she's going to do her job and it's up to us to decide if she's doing a good job or not. Well, I got nothing much to say. What about you, Tara? Pretty much what Bearded said. Explosions! Well, because basically every movie have it has explosions. True, but this is a big budget movie. Probably with two hours or maybe one hour 45 minutes of Worth of pony content. Oh, uh, maybe. So, next question, Ro. What do you think Suns and Shimmer and Sci- Sightwise newest science project from the Everfree Forest will be? Oh, that's a good question. I think a huge base cannon and explosions! <laughs> that's gonna be a team, ain't it? Aww. But, uh, you know, Terra, why did you go first, man? I, I'm not sure. I mean, Twi- Twilight in Equestria, she's built that portal where she can just come and go into the Equestria Girls universe and Equestria. So, I don't know, they they could just st- like just walk right through and be like, oh, look, this is Equestria. And then we got two Twilights. Well, there's something people want to see, but uh, this is more specifically Sci Twi. And uh, the newest pony adventure or the Equestria Girls adventure is going to be something about them traveling, having a road trip to the Everfree Forest in their human world. So this can open up a whole bunch of ideas that, well, it's going to be fun. Other than that, I got no idea what they're going to discover because Saitoi here is new to the whole magic thing and Sunset Shimmer is kind of the veteran because, well, she is a pony from Equestria. Magic is mm, kind of normal for her. And what will they discover? I got no idea. It's up to the writers to create a very believable world, which can be awesome because usually if there's a movie, there's going to be a song. And if Actually, science meets of... magic, minds will explode. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. 
Actually, speaking of the Everfree Force, this, I'm going back a, que- a question to what we see in Season 6. Mm-hmm. What would also be kind of good is if we see where Zakora came from because we didn't see her much in Season 5. Oh, yeah. I mean, in general, like, we do know that she's a zebra from a faraway land. Yeah, like, we, we sh- but the question is, how did she get to the Everfree Forest? I mean, the question, the bigger question is, how did she get to that remote part of Ponyville? Exactly. Like, Nobody knew where she came from, like, what? Like, she just came in out of nowhere. Did she tell her backstory about um when she visited towns, Pony was scared of her and stuff? I mean, that one town in Ponyville, but other town, did she mention it? I don't think so. I think she just mentioned Ponyville. Uh, You know what it would be more strange that if she was a human that came into the Pony world? Wouldn't that make a lot of, what? You might as well have that pull in the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> then Lyra will be so happy. Uh, but th- oh, that's a, just a crazy theory. Uh, don't don't quote me on that. A, a show pony theory. theory. Oh <laughs> uh, god, no. Last question, Rob. Nerf plus MLP. Okay, I have no idea what Nerf is. Could someone please give me a quick sit rep? Nerf is like um, it's guns, but they shoot those those sticky plastic tubes. I think they. I think they're styrofoams or. Yeah, styrofoams. Yeah. Not really styrofoam, but kind of. It's nothing else, it's just gun toys? Yep, gun toys, yeah. gun arrows, gun grenades. Okay, a nerf and MLP. I'm thinking it needs more explosions! <laughs> when else says I have no idea. No idea. Nerf and MLP? Uh, I guess you can attach the little rainbow, what you call those streamers, to the end of the bullet thingy to make it look more MLP. I don't know. Ponies and guns does, don't seem like right. Now that sounds like a Michael Bay movie. Transformers. <laughs> but if you think, if you think about it, though, in um, when Rainbow Dash and Flores are singing "May the Best Pet Win," Rainbow Dash says she needs something real fast, like a bullet. So I'm just pointing that out there. <laughs> True. I, I don't know. I mean, dun, dun, dun. probably that is for the song, but I don't know. I got no. I got nothing to defend. Yeah. 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 Probably. Probably because they did mention the hand. In, a, in the previous seasons throughout the show. Yeah. A lot. That's actually and another thing. What's a hand? <laughs> Remember the end yeah, of the movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah the Rainbow Dash is like, what are hands? <laughs> uh, but still, it's one of those things where the script writers were not um, sharp enough during back in the days. They were just doing it for, you know, just doing it. And Hasbro was not checking for minor mistakes like that. But now that it's, well, now that we, they have us, they have to check it out for themselves before we get a piece of the pie. Yeah, and the way you said it, it sounds like Shia LaBeouf was working on the script. He was just, just do it. it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But um, Nerf plus MLPs, I don't think it's a good idea on the whole series. It would be an interesting idea if they do mix it up together, but I don't know. It, it's, it'll be fun, but... I personally don't know. They do. They did it with Star Wars, so possible if they want to. What do you think, Tara? I I don't know because isn't the show also based on little girls? But actually, now you think about it, you do see a skeleton head of the. Um, I forget what that creature's name, but the skeleton the skeleton head of that one creature mm-hmm. in um the Lost Treasure of Griffinstone. Yep, yep. And also, you they do have Nerf Rebel, which is Nerf for girls. So you have ah that too yeah so <laughs> it's within the realm of possibility but I don't know if they want to do it. Yeah, let's see, love the show and all the co-hosts you got on. As we, as we all know, the hiatus is coming to an end. I bet everyone's excited in their own way. My mother actually has a question for you too, which is kind of strange. So we'll write that what she says another time. Please give me regards to the co-hosts and the review team from Equestria CRC Brony. Hey. And P.S., do you have any guests for this week? I don't know. Tara, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery. Hmm. I don't know, CRC. This is just confusing for me. Hmm. Maybe we can answer it next week. What do you think? <laughs> Only time will tell. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Ro, next question. Shirley Ann writes, Dear Norman, I am a new listener to the MBS show since spring 2015. I am not a brony, surprisingly. However, I do watch My Little Pony from time to time and enjoy the lessons in it and admire the work of art. My Little Pony has become a family thing we love to watch and talk about, something that brings mom and the kids together as a family. 
we have found who we are as a pony characters and enjoy singing the songs and talk about it. Your show has become my Saturday night routine where my son and I listen and pass comments on how on who comes on your show and it is something that brings my brony son and I close together. I'm grateful for that. Because of your show, I am more a part of his life, more able to connect, and we have something to look forward to our MBS date night together. I wanted to tell you all and hope that it will comfort Luna Jacks to know that some pa- parents do not deem all bronies to be something more than just true fans. Norman, I think you have a sweet voice and a kind heart and that you deserve a good wife someday. Your mother must be proud of you and you sound like a good man. I enjoyed the one show when Ju- Luna Jax was on and I and hope to hear him again on the show soon. Kyle is funny and I have missed Relicious with his diversity of opinions. Do I have a diversity of opinions? Maybe. Okay, I am not self-aware of that. <laughs> anyway, we have a great time listening to you and all to you all and wanted to encourage you in your work. It will be fun to hear as the new season and movie are about to come out and how you are all excited. You're a new fan and since my kids identify me as Shirley, well, I kind of signed this email sincerely yours, Shirley Ann. That's so beautiful. I know. And guess who um, his, her kid is? You know I'm terrible about guessing games. CRC Rooney. Plot twist! <laughs> yeah, sorry CRC. Just had to put this one in there. Uh, now everyone cool. knows. I know. Uh, truly, thank you very much. Like, I, I, I'm speechless. Even after reading this a few times, I'm left speechless. I'm glad that this show can bring you guys closer together. I'm happy. And I'm glad that you enjoy the banter we have. And I'm also happy that you like the guests that we have. Ain't that right, Totera? The one and only. So I, I do hope that you keep on listening and just be awesome to each other. Like I don't know what to say. There's there's nothing more I can say. You left him speechless. I know. I mean, after the MBS show, we thank you for your letter and do hope to hear from you again. Yes, thank you. That that, that, that works. <laughs> so much love for the show. I know. Oh uh, wow. Well. Don't cry, Norman. <laughs> I'm not crying. Okay, next letter from James Zung- Zunker. I hope I got it right. I apologize if I butchered your name. I'm terrible with names. Let's see. I got questions. One, when did the four of you first became bronies? Well, I became brony. Well, you face the, that, that I'm a brony. I'm just a guy who likes the show. You know, I just, I don't, anyway. I became, I discovered the show, like, let's see now. I think it was way before I started college. Uh, I think it was around 2000. I think it was like the beginning of season two. What, what was it like three years ago now? Um, that would be give me a second. Two season two would be two thousand eleven. Around two thousand thirteen, yeah, somewhere around that area is when I discovered the show, and that was like it was like a Sparta remix, you know, those ridiculous YouTube videos and all that stuff. So was like, yeah, that was flush. I like screaming, "You're gonna love me!" I'm like, okay, that looks like a Pegasus. It is screaming on top of its slog in front of the screen that you're going to love me this according to the colors this looks like a kid show but this does not feel like a kid show what is this <laughs> and then i look into like okay mlp oh you mean that old tv show about ponies and then there's the toys like oh good grief there's so many people into this show i want to go meet the cool people <laughs> well you guys already heard totera's story I'm going to summarize mine because I've told this a lot of times and I, I won't say boring, but I got no idea how to explain it well. Uh, back in 2011, when I was online, I saw a lot of things popping up like DeviantArt. The people I, who I follow uh, were drawing a bit of ponies here and there. And I was heavily into um, Know Your Meme. And one of the new meme was uh, My Little Pony. I look at it and was intrigued. So I watched the first episode, I watched the second episode, and so on. And by the time I reached um, Call of the Cutie, uh, what, what was the episode where they were on a kiss like rock band episode? Uh, I forgot. But it was on that episode that got me hooked, that made me realize that, oh my goodness, this show is pretty good. And from that point on, I kept watching, watched the movie, buy the merch, and so on. 
Tara, you want to uh, chime in a bit more, or was first thing you said early on enough? Oh, well, I could add a bit more. How I how I thought that. Uh, the older generations, I thought it was like kind of silly looking, and the older generations looked like they was really aimed towards the younger kids, like babies. Which one, like three point five or three? I think it was uh, three point five. Oh god! <laughs> I love animation, but that was just a big no no. I do agree if people say that the show sucks back in the days. It was not great. <laughs> It was toy promotion. That's all it was. True, but still, season five in this show, Generation Four, did it well. It was a way to promote toys, but still. But this one, it has a uh, adventure, danger, excitement. Well, so did the first generation. It works. I'm thinking <laughs> that if you write a good story, your product will sell. Yeah. As a great musician once said, "Good." Content is self-promoting. Ah, true that, true that. So, next question. Mm -hmm. When did you guys first think of becoming the MBS show? Well, I'm not the original creator. I'm just a guy who got invited one day and then the site was given the position of co-host. I can't exactly answer that since I just came here. Yeah. But, um, when? Well, funny enough, on February 25th of 2012 was the first release episode of the MBS show. So that was, what, four years ago? And recently we celebrated our fourth anniversary with nothing really. I just, I totally honestly, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that it was our anniversary until one of our previous co-hosts mentioned it to me. Ah, four years of doing this. It's like a routine that I have locked myself into. Much fun. So yeah, I became like part of the show in around 2000, let's see, a year later after the show, after discovering the show. That's like 2014. Hmm, somewhere around that. So I've been learning like well, since like 2016, I'd say less than two years now. Really? That long? I thought you kind of jumped I know, in. I joined around summer. It was hot. I was only wearing my glasses. Mm -hmm. And I think you were still working in the um, black, black, as a blacksmith? I think I already left the factory at that point. Not yet. I think. I think. I'm not 100% uh, sure. Some, somewhere around that. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, around that area. That was like almost summer, May, July. July. No, no, July's the mid. June. Yeah, between May and June. Somewhere around that area. So our two year anniversary is coming quite soon. Mm. So yeah, next question. Yep, yep. How were you first introduced to MLP? Hmm. Well, as I mentioned before, I just discovered a random spot area mix on a. Just a very boring after work day. And I was like, what is this? Okay, Ro, I need to ask because when you know, knowing how YouTube works, it's probably you've seen a lot of Sparta remixes and that came up. But what were you watching that pop up ponies? I have no idea. I was just bored. I was just clicking video after video after video after video after video. I wasn't even paying attention. I was looking. I was just clicking like quick viewing than just clicking the next video. It was boring. It was a boring day. Back then, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. It was still that phase mm. where I was searching for what is the meaning of life <laughs> aside from number 24 and cheese balls. <laughs> uh, so yeah, then one, and then they just see Fluttershy just screamed at me like, what is this? Uh, by the way, who is your favorite pony? I'm still torn between Pinkie Pie and Vinyl. Huh. I would have thought Fluttershy because of the whole Sparta remix. I mean, yeah, she was the first one I've seen, but uh, she's my second, well, okay, third close. All right, all right. So, Tadera, how did you got first introduced to ponies? It was pretty much when I saw videos of Nightmare Moon. Huh. So, basically the same thing then. What Nightmare Moon? PMVs or just the whole series? It, it was PMVs. I know one person did a PMV of um Bad Horse, but I think it was like from Dr. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and then the um, bad horse was apparently Nightmare Moon, and I saw that. I'm like, whoa, this character looks very evil, like, just so dangerous. You got a lot of good content of Nightmare Moon, because back in the days, there were none, like, except for that first two episodes. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Lucky you, I guess. <laughs> what a great time to be a fan of Nightmare Moon. I know. Uh, it's for me... Uh... How did I get first introduced? Well, it goes back to the same story of um, DeviantArt artists 
popping up with ponies, me wanting to know more is about that. But if you want to go way back when, when I was a little lad, I saw a lot of cartoons. And during those times, I got no idea what boy shows are and what girl shows are. So I just watched cartoons. My Little Pony was on, so I just saw. Kind of enjoyed it because it was kind of not bad back in the days. It was okay. But Transformer came, G.I. Joe came, Turtles came. So, eh, I like those things. Too bad that Pony didn't get any more where I was from. But now we got Season 4, or Generation 4 to be exact. And that's doing much better. So, those are the questions for this week's show. I know it's a lot of questions, but hey, we don't get a lot. So, when we do get them, we read them on the show. And thank you for all of the emails. Uh, especially to CRC, Shirley Ann, and also James here. You guys are awesome. And if you guys got any more emails, please do send them to us. So anyway, uh, let's see. I need to end the show. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show. Uh, 3D what will tweet, retweet this show, interact with you guys, and well, just basically talk to whoever tweets at her. And you can contact me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And recently tickling my fancy is life. What is it? What it is? What do we do? Why are we here? But Ro, we're gonna get you, man. You can find me on my Twitter at Relicious underscore art, where I reblog a lot of other people's web comics. Sometimes post my own comic and just tweet my random crazy thoughts. Or my DA gallery at Relicious.DeviantArt.com. Or my Tumblr, where we help share the arts and spread it across the universe at ReliciousGalleries.Tumblr.com. Nice. Totero, where can they find you? Well, you can find me, of course, on YouTube, or you can look me up on my Facebook page or DeviantArt. And if you want to, you can support me on Patreon. Every little donation counts. Yeah, do do that because every little bit helps. And with your help, Totera can probably go to cons. See, you're helping. Yes, you help me. Help me meet my senpai. I will not die happy until I meet him. (laughs) I don't think you need to go that far, man. Like, be other okay, people's... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, I, I need something to drink here. Be other people's senpai. That will be more awesome. Overtake the senpais. <laughs> senpai? Uh, Rise above. Yes. Anyway, uh, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we do have the Facebook page. Links will be in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Hanzo. I'm Relicious Rhymes with Delicious. I am Torterra1324. And we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing show. If not, we'll just probably be the same old, same old. We'll catch you guys next week. Bye-bye.